This is, this is, this is. Hey, you guys, what's up? So I'm excited. This is a little bit different of an episode. Welcome, episode 433. Here we are, the My Career Podcast. Um, we've been doing this thing. Um, as I record this, it just hit 333 on my computer. Boom. Does that happen to you guys? You look down, you see numbers. That happens to me all the time. But um, check it out. Uh, we just released uh, a new song called Unstoppable, and it's a cover song by a band called The Planet Smashers. One of my favorite songs by them, and you guys should check it out. Um, we added an MXPX flavor, a heavy MXPX flavor. In fact, we just kind of took the shell of the song and made it our own, and I'm really proud of of, uh, of how we did it and, and how it came out. So love the song. Shout out to The Planet Smashers. Um, if you guys haven't heard it, please go uh, check it out. If you have heard it, make sure it's added to your, your music libraries so that it's there. Because out of sight, out of mind sometimes. And that's, that's a song that I hope uh, people live, live with for a little bit. Because it means more than just listening to the song you know, for us. But uh, the, the message behind it, I love the message. You can go check it out. Anyway, let's get to it. Hey, before we get to your voicemails, check this out. Uh, we have some vinyl. We, we announced that we repressed three albums, Life in General, Slowly Going the Way of the Buffalo, and The Ever-Passing Moment by MXPX, my band. So the first variant from Life in General is the neon green. It's probably going to look a little weird and dull here, but in the light, in the light, if you had light, 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 I don't think that's going to help either. But you know what I'm saying. There's that. There's the Cornetto candy. I love this Cornetto candy. Look at that. Boom, 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 boom. I know it. I know it. And then, of course, the black variant. There we go. Can't go wrong with that. And that's life in general. All original artwork. Everything's original in it. We've got uh, Buffalo. We've got the uh, olive green. Everything's just looking green. Um, we've got uh, the, this is the twist variant, Buffalo twist. And then, of course, black variant. S super classic, awesome, love it. <clears throat> of course, you got the, uh, the cover, the back cover. Everything comes with an insert. Each album comes with its own insert that has lyrics, photos, all of that. Liner notes, thank you list. Here's the ever passing moment. Look at this blue. Boom. This is the bright blue variant. Looks amazing. There we go. Heavy splatter vari uh, variant. I love this. This looks so good. And then we have classic black variant. Can't go wrong. That's the ever passing moment, the original artwork. Of course, back cover, same. Uh, we added our, our logo right there. And <clears throat> those are the all nine variants that we have available on November 4th. So they're not in, in the store right now at mxpx.com. November 4th, okay? All right, you guys. If you want to call in, please call. My number is 360-830-6660. Call, leave a message. Um... I've been using a lot of these these voicemails for episodes lately just because I've been very, very busy and I don't know when I have time to actually do an episode. And busy meaning making all these videos for the vinyl stuff, making video, you know, helping get this unstoppable stuff going. It's been, in, you know, and of course, you know, you know, November 4th is coming. I want to be on the ground with the crew shipping out your records. So we're going to start shipping. We have the records in hand. You just saw them. So we're going to be ready for that. So it's been a crazy couple weeks for me. I, I just didn't want to not have an episode out, guys. You know, I don't want to disappoint. But, um, you know, I got to go in a minute. So let's take one one voicemail and then uh, and then I got to go. And then we'll, we'll see you next week. Cheers. Hey, Mike. It's uh, Travis from Virginia again. I promise not to sing or call you a BSer. <laughs> Uh, I actually have a, a real question. Uh, I like to write songs, not that I'm any good at it, but you're very good at it. Have you ever written a song, like a love song for a girl, 
Yeah, you know, and things don't pan out. Um, but it's a great song. What do you do when your current girlfriend or wife reads it and says, what's this song about? Do you fluff it a little bit and say, oh, you know, it's about an imaginary girl or a, you know, do you take the <laughs> point of view, you know, as writing from someone else's point of view, you know, and say, oh, I was writing about, you know, this hypothetical situation or whatever. Just curious on that. Hopefully yeah. that was a clear question. It is. Anyway, also I wanted to take a second and say thanks a lot. You guys are, you know, I've been listening to you since 1996. Thanks for the memories, man. It means a lot to me. Wow, thanks, Travis. 96, man, that's that's a long time. You know, that's an interesting question because, you know, I could go a lot of ways with it. But to be honest, I have a lot of songs that I wrote for other girls um, in my catalog. And that's just living life, you know. It's not just about... Hey, Mike, it's uh, Travis. Oh, it started over. Sorry, Travis. <laughs> We're going to leave that in there. Um, <laughs> uh, I just, you know, honestly, like, I feel like that's just part of life. You know, we have experiences and I say this now, you know, sometimes it's hard to be open about things and I, I don't recommend you telling your current girlfriend or wife all the, the details of what this song is about you know, I think you should keep it vague and just be like, you know, I just had the inspiration. I had a crush on this girl and and uh, that's it. You know, like I wrote a song and and the, the ideas come from life, you know, and it doesn't necessarily always mean that you mean uh, every single word of it. But like you, you want to, you want to mean every every single word, of it. you know, and I think. I think there's just different types of songs. You know, it depends on what kind of songwriter you are because um, I'm the type of songwriter that, that I write personal feelings, but I also write songs that other people can get their personal feelings into, you know. So it doesn't have to be about me. It doesn't have to be about my situation. It can be more broad. But it can be more broad meaning even something as granular as I wake up in the morning, I go take a piss, wash my face, brush my teeth, get some coffee. You know, like, that's something that so many people are like, yeah, I do that too. I do that too. You know, like, that's the kind of song, if you can make those moments into interesting, interesting, I guess, vignettes of your experiences and life and relate, you know, people will relate to that. So I know I got off a little, a little off topic but I really feel, I feel like that's very broad as far as, like, as a songwriter, it just depends on what kind of songwriter you are, right? So um, I, I just can't, I can't imagine that, that every person that is your wife or girlfriend. You know, there's a lot of different types of wives and girlfriends out there. And in some cases, it could be the other way around. Husbands, boyfriends. You might be a female artist or or something else, right? Uh, and and I I don't... I just don't think that, that it's always going to be the exact same thing for everybody, right? Um, for me, you asked about me, though. I try to, you know, maybe maybe that's my problem is when I write songs, I do write songs about me, but I always leave it a little open to interpretation, even though there's like specific things. There's a new song I wrote and there's a thing that's like, I talk about Vegas. I talk about Vegas and going out on a limb. And it's kind of one of those um, like, it's not that part, it's the song itself. There's some parts in the song that are like, wow, 
that's weird or that's, you know, but then, but, but, but you think dark thoughts in real life, you know, and you think, what if, what if my life was totally different? What if I didn't have these people around me, this, these people I call my family, you know, and if it's, if it's your wife or girlfriend or husband or, or boyfriend or whatever it is, or maybe you're single and you just have friends and you have coworker friends and like, what if all those people, um, you know, you know, parents, whatever, you know, kids, what if those people were different, right? Like you think if you had made some different decision in life, you wouldn't have met that person. That sig your significant other and, and it is usually the easiest way to sort of <clears throat> talk about this, this idea. But um, it could be anything, you know. It could be band guys. Like, you know, let's relate it to my band MXPX. Like, if I hadn't found Yuri, if I hadn't gotten Andy to sort of, like, play guitar, I could have gotten somebody else, and we would have been a totally different sounding band for Poconaccia. Um, and then maybe I wouldn't have ever gotten Tom because we would have kept the first guy, you know, if it wasn't Andy. Um, I'm getting into the, the deep what ifs of, of MXPX lore. But for those that know MXPX, maybe this is kind of interesting, but it's kind of a thought experiment. Um, but I think it's important to realize like so many decisions and non-decisions have to be made to get where you are, yet you don't you don't try to get, like, you do try to get where you are, sure. If you have goals and you have, you know, you're in school and you're trying to do well, you're trying, right? So I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is if you tried to do it again the same way, there's no way you would get here. There's no way you could get to now I've, you know, released 10 full-length albums plus a ton of other, you know, albums full of songs and, and collections and, and seven inches and singles and EPs and, and uh, documentaries and videos and so like that's like the MXPX legacy you know we had cassettes and CDs and we had uh, you know we have digital art as well and digital releases and vinyl and so like that's something to like carry with us but we have to realize like that might not even even exist if I had made a few different decisions really early on in MXPX uh, history uh, pertaining to some of the members of the band. What if I never found Yuri? What if I had some other drummer that just couldn't get it, couldn't play fast? Like, Yuri didn't start playing fast until we asked him to. We're like, hey, could you do this? Like, do, 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 And he's like, okay, yeah. And he tried, you know, he figured it out. You know, he, he, he was aware of, like, bands like the Dead Milkmen, you know? Like, that's a band that I think Yuri and I bonded over early 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 and we covered swordfish at our second or third show we played played andy husted's side yard i guess it was front yard but side yard and we played you know kind of the, a similar setup as what we did at my parents house our first show on november 6th 1992 not november 6th that's my birthday it's coming up <laughs> on uh, july 6th so sixes, nines, they're part of my life, and they get all mixed up. But, um, yeah, that, that's like, you know, it's interesting to kind of think about and think, and then it makes you think, okay, I'm lucky to be here. I'm lucky to be right here in this moment. Things are hard. People struggle. But the good times are great, and music will always be with us as long as we're here to listen to it and as long as it, we have something to play it on, you know. So... Um, I would love your feedback this week. I would love to hear um, hear from you and just just say hi. Just say hi. I think I think we need to start interacting with each other more. We've gotten so used to scrolling past posts, and I'm trying to personally take a moment and, and comment to people now and again when I when I have time, and like my fr even my own friends. You know, I try to like I'm trying to like their posts more, and. Um, so get out there, say hi. I would love to hear from you. Say what's up to Bob McKnight. He's uh, my producer and editor. I don't know if he's going to do this or if I'm just going to do this myself tonight, but uh, I'm going to throw it at him and see what happens. Um, anyway, that's not important. What's, what's important is 
you check out his podcast, The Bob and Katie Show. He has a podcast. <laughs> the link is on the show notes always. Um, but uh, I appreciate what he does. So if you guys want to keep calling in, the number is 360-830-6660. Would love to hear from you. Um, ladies, always missing you. Please call in. Let me know what's up. I'm sorry about last week, the sexy Mexi thing. That was... I wasn't planning on calling the episode that, but I couldn't think of anything else. So I was like, hey, this will this will be funny. <laughs> All right, so this is a short one. I just wanted to let you guys know um, that uh, we're still working on things. If you want to come to our shows, we have MXPX and Teenage Bottle Rocket live November 18th. That's a Friday night in Chicago at the House of Blues. Tickets are available at MXPX.com. And then the next night, Saturday night, November 19th, at the Rave in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's going to be so much fun. We can't wait. And uh, we'd love for you guys to be there. All right. Tickets are at mxweeks.com. Promise they're affordable. Let's go. Let's go. We'll have show posters. We'll do a meet and greet. We'll see you there. All right. Cheers. Cheers.